The Grecians are back from their long trips to Carlisle and Stevenage and we return to home league action as City take on Bradford City here at the park. Coming up on Park Life this week, we take a look back at previous clashes with Bradford. We get a little piece of history from Will Barrett and we also hear from City's January recruits. But first, let's take a look back to Tuesday night when City headed to Stevenage. Norris and Stevens. Stevens is waiting for the ball to be delivered to his feet. Here he is, Matty Stevens, and denied at the near post. Looking to find Luke Norris. Here is Norris with a chance to shoot, and it comes off the frame of the goal. Andreessen might well have got a touch on that. Helped on around the corner by Sweeney. Low ball in. Might come and does come to Ben Seymour. The three points today. In goes the corner, six yard box, haven't quite got it clear still. Stevenage, it comes to Taylor, who can't keep his effort down. But what can the visitors do? It's a free kick by Sparks, it's flicked on by McArdle and flicked in by Rory McArdle. And Exeter do have their goal after two barren games. It takes a first since September 2019 from Rory McArdle to put them in front. A flicked header and a vital goal as they look to climb the League Two table once again. Free kick goes in. It might come to Elliot List. He catches it well, but it's too straight in the end. Come again to Norris. Norris from a difficult angle, and once again, he's hit the frame of the goal. Uh, to Sparks, rather. In goes the cross off the post by Jay. Well, he's been a real threat, Jack Sparks, in the first half. Another good cross. Eventually managed to claim it at the second attempt, and now he will look to launch the counter attack. At the other end, it's Andres and forced to come out of his goal. Gap was there for Jay. Instead, Caprice crosses the header, is a weak one by Bowman, and a comfortable stop for Stockdale. Very good cross in. But there is no time, and Exeter have their win. It only took a single goal. Saturday's game will be the first of only two home games in our eight matches during February. So we need to make the most of our games here at the park. Here is manager Matt Taylor with his thoughts ahead of the game. Probably the the, the, the reflection in terms of the form recently shows what a good set of players have got there. Um, and probably shows they were probably underachieving for the first part of the season. Um, so we know what to expect in terms of their, 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 their settled system and their settled style at the moment um, but they're coming to our home patch um, and you've got to look forward to a game of this stature it's, it's a game which grabs your attention because Bradford is such a big team in this league um, and their their history and their, their reputation in terms of size of the club is second to none um, it's a shame the fans can't be there because I know how well Bradford travel with their fans um, and we always respond accordingly in terms of our home fans so um, a slightly different atmosphere to what you'd usually expect to a home team against Bradford, um, but one which we're expecting to be a, a high quality game. You mentioned their recruitment there. One of those players is Danny Rowe, who we've already seen for Oldham this season. I guess the message is don't give them a free kick about 35 yards out. Well, it was probably about 40 yards out, but exa exactly that. Um, and he's done that consistently throughout his career. Um, full credit to him. He, he hits the ball pretty hard and pretty clean and pretty sweetly. Um, and we all know that only too well in terms of um, the game early on in the season. But he's got other attributes just in that. And, and Bradford have got other threats just apart from Danny Rowe as well. So, um, like I say, lots of good players on show this weekend. We wanted to put in a, a good performance, um, building another type of performance like we did on Tuesday night, which was gritty, determined, uh, resolute at times. Um, but still had enough about us in terms of uh, attacking play to, to hurt the opposition. So, um we just got to make sure we, we pick a team which is fresh enough. Um, I alluded to it previously on the, the previous interviews about how Jurgen Klopp was mentioning mental fatigue within his squad. Um, and we see that on a daily basis um, within our group, um, especially with the amount of travelling um, and, and the restraints in relation to what we can and can't do at the moment. So we've got to freshen it up again this weekend. Um, but whoever we put out on that pitch, we need a bit of energy and a bit of life. And to play like we're the home team. Um, and like I say, hopefully it'll be a good reflection on two good teams we, we're full of good players. One of goalkeeper Jokel Andresen's games in his initial spell with the Grecians was that two-all draw against Bradford up at Valley Parade earlier in the season. We caught up with him ahead of this game back at the park to see just how he's settling in again at Exeter. Oh, it, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a tough game. I, I remember when we played them away, they were really hard to break through. They were really hard to break through. 
They um and they were really good at they scored some good goals as well. I remember the first goal was like kind of a counter attack. They were really quick. And and you know, it, it, we're gonna have to make sure that <clears throat> we're gonna into the game that we're mentally strong. I feel like that's gonna be our biggest thing because I know how good of a football team we are. I know we're like on the ball and how we play, we're unreal. I feel like if we get our minds in into the game straight away, I think we could come on top, definitely. You've gained a lot of fans over the past few months mm-hmm. in Exeter. I mean, and especially after your interview with us last week when you re-signed, the fans seem to really, really enjoy having you at the club. <laughs> what does it mean to you to be so popular amongst the fan base? Um, yeah. Obviously, getting, you know, everyone, you know, they it's not popular, I wouldn't say that much. It's, I... I'm just that kind of guy that, you know, that just likes to be open, that likes to be, you know, you know, friends with everyone, really. I don't want to, I don't want any enemies. I don't want anything like that. I just want to make sure I'm on page with everyone. I just want to be, you know, I'm just, you know, trying to be myself and, you know, Luckily, the fans seem to enjoy it. You know, there's, you know, there's nothing being about popular or anything like that. I just wanna, I just wanna play football. I just wanna, you know, get get as high as in the league as we can, and that's all that really matters for me. You know, I'm like I've said so many times, uh, the fans are absolutely amazing, and you know, it's uh, I'm, you know, I'm so grateful that how how heartwarming they are and how nice they've been to me because I know that isn't everywhere you know that isn't everywhere so I'm so lucky lucky to have them you know supporting us supporting me and yeah I couldn't you know I couldn't say more thank you to the fans it's now time for a little bit of Barrett here is Will with all things past and present on the Bantams Bradford arrive at St James Park this weekend on a solid run of form that has seen them win five and draw three of their past eight games in Skybet League 2. Looking at the historic record between the Grecians and the Bantams, it's certainly more of a mixed bag, with City winning 15, drawing 12 and losing 16 of our 43 matches in all competitions so far. It's also evident that there have been some classic games between the sides, with 119 goals in total being shared across all of these matchups. Last time out, the game certainly lived up to that billing as City competed in a two-all draw that saw goals from Matt Jay and Ryan Bowman help us to pick up a point away from home last November. In terms of the historic home record, which goes back to a 2-1 Bradford win in November 1961, City have won nine, drawn six and lost six, with 33 scored and 24 conceded. Five of those goals came during Bradford's last visit to the park in March 2013, when a debut goal from Lawson Dath helped City to a thumping 4-1 win. Based on Bradford's form of late, this will be a tough one to match. But as history shows, we should expect almost anything to happen when these two sides meet. It's time now to rewind the clocks back a few months to earlier in the season when City made the long trip north to Yorkshire. It was a two-all draw at Valley Parade that day with the big man Ryan Bowman on the score sheet. Let's take a look back at the highlights from that one.
on this wall is the name of every single player to wear the famous red and white of Exeter City. And now we've got three more names to add to the wall. As the January transfer window closed at the start of the week, it's time to give a big Grecian welcome to Jukal Anderson, Robbie Wilmot and Sam Stubbs. Exeter City, Reds are great, Reds are great. Others will pity St. James is part It is round, right from the start. You hear the sound, people will say it. Wherever we play it, Exeter City celebrate. But really happy, happy that I'm here now and can, can try and get cracking on. Uh, there's a lot about Exeter that, that, that's, that's interesting. Um, as I say, probably the biggest thing was was the fact that the club and, and myself have been in contact or we, we've known about each other for a while. Um, and then obviously the, the way Exeter are in terms of developing players and moving them on and, um, and making the players better. Um, so that was, that was probably the two biggest things for me. Only one pound. The strongest that have ever lived. Celebrate. Hey guys, Jocko Anderson here, and all I can say, I'm back. I can't wait to get started and start playing for you guys. We've got a massive game on Saturday, and we'll be looking for the three points. Hopefully, I'll see you soon, guys, and take care. All the best, guys. Down in glorious Devon, there's a football team. For their winning ways, they deserve our praise. So let's shout together. That started off my professional career. You know, it, it's it's an honour to be back because you guys have done so much for me, the club, the staff, everyone. So I'm really happy to be back. It's a long season ahead. It's a long season ahead. So personally, myself, I just got to make sure, you know, I'm focused now. I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm eager to go. I can't wait for, you know, to get back in and, you know, start the season again, kind of, with Exeter. Usually in an interview, we ask a new signing you know what can we expect from you? But I, I guess the Exeter fans have, have already seen what you could do when we had to <laughs> know last month. Um, you know, I'm I'm happy that I was able to do well. You know, I was happy that I was able to show the fans what I can do. You know, everyone thought I was just uh, an un, unexperienced 19 year old. You know, that didn't didn't have a clue what to do in goal. But you know, I've I've been training so hard. I've been doing my, you know, my own stuff, and you know, I was just really happy to uh, able to show in the nine games that I had with Exeter. So, and you know, I'll promise nothing else that I will show that again for the next for the next twenty three games. Exeter, oh Exeter, we're the best in the West. We're on the ball for you. Exeter, oh Exeter. Nick Gaffery, uh, give me a call, and. Um, to be honest, I couldn't turn it down. It's a, it's a great opportunity. Personal goal is just to uh, score as many goals as possible, make as many goals as possible, and, and promotion. Promotion is always the main aim. So hopefully, get promoted with Exeter. It's got big ambitions, so I'm uh, very excited to be here. Um, how did the move come about? Um, I had a few decisions to make yesterday um, about whether to stay or to go, and then the gaffer uh, gave me a call. and. Um, to be honest, I couldn't turn it down. It's a, it's a great opportunity. And you're fit and raring to go as well. I mean, what are you going to bring to the side? Um, hopefully a lot of creativity, um, a lot of crosses, and hopefully I can um, score some goals for the, the, for the team and um, get back up the table. And you just finished up your first training session as well. How did you find that? No, it was great. Um, it was a great training session um, going into tomorrow. Uh, met all the boys this morning. Um, they seemed like a great bunch of lads, so uh, made me feel very welcome. So I'm just uh, happy to be here. The Bantams weren't in action on Tuesday night, but they were in action last weekend as they beat Barrow 2-1 to extend their unbeaten league run to eight games.
As you may have seen last week, we caught up with Jockel Anderson on his return to City. He's a lovable old guy, isn't he? We found out a little bit more about him and we even got him teaching us some Icelandic. Jockel, we're going to find out a little bit more about you. Find out, you know, how how your growing up your life was and, and what some of your favourite things are, just so the fans can can find out a little bit more. We'll start with when you were growing up. What football team did you did you support? I've uh, I've always been a Manchester United uh, fan. My uh, my whole family was a Chelsea Arsenal fan. I thought, nah, sod them. I'm, I'm a Man United fan. I'm a I was having Cristiano Ronaldo every day of the week when I was growing up. So, yeah, big United fan. And what about back in Iceland? Is, is there a team that maybe your, your family will support back in Iceland? Oh, you won't know them. There's obviously the team that I grew up with. It's called, uh, uh, it's called uh, After Elting. It's the team that I grew up with. And uh, we always, it's always been my team. If you dare to support any other team, you know, you, uh, no, no one's liking you, you know. So that's, you know, I'm strong after anything fan. So, yeah. What about your hero growing up? Was there a particular player you looked up to, a particular goalkeeper that you aspired to be like? Mm. Um, there's been, I'll be honest with you, there's always one person that I've always look, looked up to, and that's my uh, older brother, Axel. That's, um, you know, he's... He's been uh, the biggest help probably of all to me in my in my career. We obviously moved together to Reading. We started together at Reading, you know, and he just he just showed me the ropes. He showed me how I can be that be better. He helped me with, with my nutrition, my mental health. If I ever needed to talk to someone, he was always there. And I would definitely say my older brother is probably my biggest inspiration. He's just signed for a, a new team. I've seen as well. I, I think yeah. on Twitter. He's gone to um, he's gone to Latvia, Riga, Riga FC. So it's a new chapter for him, new exciting chapter, and I'm I'm so buzzing for him. I'm like I'm so buzzing for him. And am I right in thinking you, you're a goalkeeper because he he needed someone in the garden to, to yeah, take did, the shots? Did you see my mum? Yeah, you saw my yeah. mum tweeting that, didn't you? Ah, oh, mum. Stitching me off, uh, no. So, uh, when we were young, my uh, we didn't we weren't ever really a football family, like my mum or my dad didn't like knew nothing about it. It was my older brother that started everything, he just he adored football for some reason, but uh, he started doing it, and um, so he was he was normally in the garden just by himself, and he was thinking, you know what, I need a goalkeeper in the net. So he just looked for the, you know, for his nearest brother, really. And he just said, uh, Jock will get a goal. And then, you know, I, I seem to be all right, you know. So that's pretty much how my career started. How the journey started, eh? What exactly. about, what's your favourite food? Oh, what a question that is. Oh, I'm going to have to have a little think about that. I would maybe, um, I would think I would have to go... With a hamburger, a hamburger. Yeah, I love me some burgers. There's uh, this great place in Iceland. I think it's in England as well. It's uh, it's called Tommy's Joint Burger here in England. I know it's in London or something like that. But they they give out the best burgers. So yeah, I'll go for a burger definitely. Not before match day. Not before a match. Though. Nah, no, no, no chance. No chance. Maybe after again. Yeah. What's your no favourite? Chance. Music or particular song or particular artist? What's your favourite? Um, I wouldn't... See, this is always hard. I'm always a bit of a mix. I'm always a bit of a mix of, uh, you know, hip-hop and, you know, pop. Uh, you know, I've always... You know, I can't really say... I'll probably say Post Malone's probably my, up there. But then, you know, you've got to love a bit of Adele and, you know, a bit of that, you know. I've always... I'm never a one guy kind of guy, so I'm, yeah, a bit of a mix of that. I've missed. I've, I had some more football questions. I missed one off. What's the best stadium you've ever played in? Ever played in? Oh, Jesus! The right answer, is St James Park, but I'll, I'll... yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, let me have a little think. There's been a couple now. Um, best stadium. Du, 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 du. Uh, I'll probably say the Sun Sunderland Stadium. Um, 
it's just it is, it is remarkable. It was really good. Um, I'll probably maybe say, geez, I've just forgotten where I played in my life. Now. <laughs> I'm going to go with Sunderland at the moment. I'll, I'll come back to you on it. I'll come back to you on it. What are you watching on, on TV at the moment? Or what, what's your favourite series on Netflix? Ooh, I would say probably my favourite series ever is probably Suits. Um, good. I like Suits as well. Yeah, they're unreal. I've got, you know, there's Peaky Blinders as well. But then if you're going for a bit of maybe comedy, it's Brooklyn Nine-Nine and stuff. They're like, unreal, unreal. But um, what I'm watching at the moment is, uh, it's called Bones. You know it? Bones, yeah. It's about bones, if you mean it. Yeah. <laughs> Shocker. Uh, yeah, I would say that's what I'm watching at the moment. I'm really enjoying it. It's really good. I've got to ask you, um, if you've seen it, the film on Netflix about the Iceland Eurovision nah, thing. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I've seen it. Thoughts? Are you offended by it? Is it good? <laughs> no, nah, I wouldn't say I'm offended by it. No, but it doesn't. It doesn't show how Icelandic people really are. You know, we're not all crazy about elves and or you know. We don't all live on the sea, you know. It's, you know, like it's a bit stereotypical, but it's a, it's a, it's a good film to be fair. Like it's funny, obviously Will Ferrell, you know, he's, he's class in it. But yeah, it's a bit stereotypical in it. Like, but no, nah, it's nothing. Just, it's nothing just, just else to clarify, like, this is not how Iceland is. <laughs> no, it's really not. It's really not. And like the way like they blew up the ship and stuff it's just like what's going on but uh nah it's all right it's all right um this last question is from scott our marketing manager yeah he wants to know have you ever shopped at iceland no oh, i've Bet you've I've never been really, asked that one before i've, I've had oh, i've had it all before i'll be honest with you i've had it all before I have shopped at Iceland, I think once, and I don't think I'm doing it again, if I'm honest. Nothing wrong with the actual shop or anything like that. But, you know, it's just like, when I when I went to Iceland, I thought, oh, I'm going to get some Icelandic stuff here. But, <laughs> nah, it really wasn't. So I was, re I was really disappointed. So, I, you know, went back to Asda. I apologise if that question has, has offended you. I'll, I'll tell <laughs> you <laughs> that, that it was a bad move. <laughs> of course not, no. Okay, we'll start with goalkeeper. Mark Maður. Mark Maður. I was going to repeat them, but I've decided that's yeah, a bad um, idea. Yeah, he's not. He's, nah. Defender. Varnar Maður. Similar. Midfielder. Midjumaður. Yeah. Striker. Framberi. Bit different. Manager. Thjallvari. Goal. Mark. Mark, I can do that one. Yeah, Mark. <laughs> nice. Nice, you. We'll do some pleasantries. Just the simple ones as hello. Hello. I think I know what that one is. Yeah, yeah. I, I can do that one. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. What's that? Goodbye. Bless. Bless. Yeah, bless. Bless. Pretty easy, yeah? Thank you. Tak fyrir. Tak fyrir. Tak fyrir. So how would you say my name is? Yeg heiti. And then... Your name. Your name, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, hate And the all important one, if you're gonna visit Iceland and you go go on holiday, how do you order a beer? Oh that's a really poor one, isn't it? Get yeah, thank Yeah. There you got yeah, you got it, you got it. No problem. And finally, because I know the fans loved it what we said on the video on Tuesday night. Can you do that again for them? Because I know they love it. Ah. Out from City! Spot on. Brilliant. Brilliant. Spot on. Oh, that's class. 
It's time now for our January goal of the month. And there is, of course, only one winner. In a case of deja vu, here is Archie Collins's rocket against Stevenage. Probably wouldn't have been in Matt Taylor's thoughts with McArdle and Parks. No, absolutely. He's favoured too. But he's playing now on the right side of this back three. And here's the youngster Alex, Hart Alex Hartridge on the left, back in the starting lineup today. Matt and Garner springs it out to the right and Pierce Sweeney takes a touch. Archie Collins is there close for support. Goes low instead to Matt Jay. Well played. Now into Collins. This is good from City. Nicky Law's there. Bowman as well. Collins still going. Left for the strike. Oh, it's a goal. Oh, what a pick. goal. The only scores belt is Archie Collins. And that one with his left peg in off the crossbar. No chance for Cummings in the Stevenage goal. We've played 10 minutes here at St James Park. It's Exeter City 1, Stevenage 0. Well, that's a fantastically worked goal, isn't it? And the, the lads at the back deserve a lot of credit it because they played it around and I think Matt Jay just found a little pocket of space didn't he just his touch his first touch was excellent played it inside Archie Collins I was thinking someone's going to close him down surely but no they didn't it opened up you may have heard last week that we caught up with groundsman Chaz about his master plan to improve the pitch after the bad weather recently as you can see the covers are on so let's hear just how it's going Obviously, we're disappointed with the amount of grass cover we got. If we've got grass cover, we can work with it. So, um, uh, because of the history, the uh, lack of the ability to do an end of season, uh, we ended up with a lot of the grasses that we don't really want, the annual meadow grasses, uh, which the reason you don't want them is because they won't last, last through the winter months. Um, they give up uh, very easily. Um, and we wanted to try and get some rye grasses back in there. Uh, so we thought rather than just wait, we try and promote things a little bit using techniques which are used elsewhere in horticulture and in our industry, having done a bit of research uh, with some uh, people with a lot more impressive pictures than I've got. Um, so uh, we, uh, just before the last game, we put some seed on uh, and the idea was left that on for a couple of days in the damp and then it, what they call chitted, uh, which is where the seed just starts to break uh, we played the game, uh, we put some sand on to cover the seed, uh, to give it a bit of a blanket, uh, a natural blanket with the sand, which also obviously helps stiffen up the surface and level up the surface. Um, and then made the decision to basically put a blanket over the surface. Uh, the idea being, uh, if you look at the research, it says that if you put the, put the covers on, put some sort of cover over, over the soil, uh, it will raise the temperature two or three degrees and the idea was that um, we'll take the germination period from uh, 14 days uh, down to seven. So we can half the germination period. Uh, obviously we haven't left it on seven days because I'm not brave enough to do so. It's the first time we've done it. We're just trying little things to make small differences, which hopefully in the, end, in the end will make a big difference. We've mainly done this this year so we can put it in practice so we know what will happen. So next year when we've got a better pitch, we can keep it better and hopefully it will never get to the level that it was recently, which wasn't great. Uh, but then you look around and there's a lot of other guys in the same, in the same situation. Um, so covers went on, they went on for, for five days, four days, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, five days. Um, and uh, kind of, this is it. They've come off and we've got a nice green grass cover. Grass is all standing up and kind of half looking forward to cutting it, which is the first time for a little while. Um, and, you know, we won't, I don't think we'll see any seed coming up from new seed for a couple of days, but hopefully just by, sat, by the time Saturday's game comes, there'll be new seed coming up and they can rip it all out again with their boots. No, all joking aside, uh, you, you've, got to, you've got to keep moving forward, uh, not give up and give it our best shot. And yeah, we're quite uplifted. Um, by what's going on, the boys are taking them off. I'll try and give a thank everybody by name. Uh, we've got on this end, we've got Andy, uh, two Andys, uh, Mark, who's my full timer, and Bob, who comes in a bit, a uh, bit of a fan, big Bob, the bass player in our band, which we haven't got going yet. And the other end, we've got uh, Dan, Pat, uh, Joe, and Gareth. Um, so the guys are going to be well looked after afterwards with nice warm sausage rolls and uh, a little bit of a surprise uh, just to lift their spirits not that they'll need lifting because uh, 
they're out and about getting some fresh air. But yeah, that's kind of where we are. Well, the next step is to get through the next game um, and then review it after that. We can sit down, debrief, have a, you know, a conversation as to where we think, whether we think the effort was worth it. Um, and uh, we may do exactly the same again between now and the next game. And then hopefully days will be longer, sun will be out and uh, temperatures will be warmer and it won't need the, um, it won't need the uh, growth sheets. And yeah, hopefully we'll have a grass pitch to cut and then we can start, you know, really working that a bit. It's much easier to work grass than it is uh, sort of bare earth, which um, is where we were for a little while there. But yeah, good progress, hopefully. Following your heart, in spirit, in soul, you make every tackle, score every goal. You're part of it, wherever you are in the world, from the first minute until the last kick. Victories, heartbreaks, you're part of the fabric, the passion, devotion, supercharging emotion. For you, there is only one. Abiding loyalty, togetherness that is second to none. Follow every kick, every tackle, every goal. With access to live stream games and match day commentary. With coverage spanning the globe. Behind the scene content, newsletters and match highlights. There's no better way for you to get closer to your club. And with I follow sales supporting them, there's no better way to show your love. And you can't be there. Be there with I follow. That is all we've got time for on part this week. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, you can pick up a match pass for the game for just £10 on iFollow so you can stay home, stay safe and back the boys from your living room. Make sure you check out our social media coverage throughout the afternoon as City go for the three points. Stay home, stay safe and up the city!